So this video clip is dealing with the topic of distribution requirements planning in ESPP. Distribution requirements planning actually means what do we really need to order from our suppliers at what point in time. Main input to this process is on one hand side the forecast, then what we have on stocks, so that means our inventory, and from the inventory optimization process we are getting the safety stocks and for rounding purposes the economic order quantity. The planning service itself is then calculating the net demand at each location of the BOD starting from the lowest level up to the top so that we exactly know at the end what needs to be procured from what supplier and exactly at what point in time. ESPP can work with scheduling agreements, so it creates delivery schedule lines, or it can also work with discrete orders. So that means it's going to be creating purchase requisitions that are, that are then transformed into purchase orders. An integrated approval is also available on different levels. So now I want to demonstrate how ESPP is determining net requirements and shift them starting at the lowest level of the BOD through the network to the entry location so that we know at the end what we need to procure from the supplier. Um, for that reason, I open the so-called DRP matrix and show you the most important key figure. I'm loading this test product over there. And um, we start at the lowest level of the BOD and I'm taking now SPP7 as an example. And I'm loading the data into the planning grid. Um, there was not yet an automated DRP run scheduled in the background and for that reason I'm simulating now the most current results and I'm clicking just on this calculator icon and um, now let's review the most important key figures for calculating the net requirements. So we start with the so-called cross demand and um, on the lowest level um, of the BOD, we see just the forecast, um, which is split from monthly buckets into daily buckets as the main demand over there. Then we go to the gross receipts. Um, as you can see, they are all empty. Um, so there are no stock transfers from the parent location scheduled. Then we have the initial warehouse stock. Also here we see that there is currently nothing on stock for this location product. And therefore, because we have just demand, but we do not have any receipts and we also do not have inventory to cover for it, um, we end up with the supply shortage. Um, and this shortage can actually earliest be solved at the end of the procurement lead time, which is colored here actually in, in light gray. And this procurement lead time is um, basically the time a stock transfer is on the way from the parent location, which is actually SPP1, to this child location over there. Now, um, DRP aims to plan at least at the level of the safety stock, which is zero in this example. Um, so the unrounded net demand at the end of the procurement lead time um, is therefore the daily forecast portions and um, as we do not have any receipts or any stock on hands, we just have the sum of these daily 
net demands that need to be covered. And this is actually what we see here as an 1,300 and around yeah, seven units in the unrounded net demand adapted. Now, this net demand is then rounded according to at least the economic order quantity. And therefore, we end up with a rounded net demand, which is equal to the economic order quantity because the unrounded net demand is less than the economic order quantity. Now, this amount is now shifted to the next level of the BOD. And therefore, we go into location SPP1. We are uploading the data. And um, the net demand here is um, actually determined the same. Um, the only difference what we have here is that we are going into the cross demand. Um, we do not see the forecast anymore because the forecast that had been calculated for this level of the BOD is, is basically not impacting um, the net requirements for this location. So here we just see as a gross demand what is coming from the direct child locations, which, which is SPP7. And um, we also see here SPP1. Um, so this is um, actually this is a special uh, within ESPP. Um, this concept of so-called virtual child location, and this here is actually the virtual child location of um, SPP one, and um, it is basically just for the purpose of of keeping direct demand for SPP one and aggregated demand. Um, which is the, the demand of SPP1 plus the demand of SPP7 um, separately um, for this location over there. Uh, we will have a separate video um, about master data where we also explain the concept of the virtual child in the BOD. Now, again, this unrounded net demand that is mainly calculated from the total cross demand. We do not have any receipts. We do not have anything on stock. But now we also need to cover for the safety stock. This unrounded net demand, um, which is the sum of the cross demand plus the safety stock, um, is now rounded according to at least the, minim the, the economic order quantity, um, but we are higher than the economic order quantity. We will just shift this amount to the next level of the BOD. <clears throat> and this is now the entry location right now. When we scroll down, we see um, that the DRP matrix um, at the entry location um, yeah, looks a little bit different. We see multiple colors um, here, which are indicating basically different horizons. We see here in white, so this is the so-called um, freeze horizon. And here um, we only can apply manual changes. So the, 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 uh, the DRP service itself will not change anything in this freeze horizon over there. Um, then we see here in yellow the so-called um, limited freeze horizon where ESPP can apply changes according to so-called stability rules. Um, and you can also watch again a separate video about the use of stability rules. So I will not explain that further. And the orange color here highlights the so-called B 
Confluence and Mission Horizon, but this is mainly interesting um, for the execution part that we are not discussing right now. Um, now let's go into the matrix itself. We have again um, the total cross demand that is here also resulting from the net requirements that had been calculated on the direct child locations. So also here the forecast is not relevant for the net requirement calculation anymore. Um, again, here we also do not have any receipts um, resulting from stock transfers, but we do have uh, an initial warehouse stock of 40,000 units. So again, we will run into a supply shortage um, that can be solved um, at the end of, of the lead time, um, which is um, highlighted as, as freeze horizon over there, and which is mainly the time that um, goods would be on the way from the supplier side if the supplier would already ship them today um, to this entry location. So this shortage um, can be solved at the end of the procurement lead time. And again, here we see this unrounded net demand adapted, which is actually resulting from the sum of the total cross demand minus the initial warehouse stock Plus, remember that also here we have to cover um, for the safety stock, plus the safety stock. So we would end up uh, with this number over here. And also here we are rounding according to the economic order quantity. Plus we are considering um, a pack size of one unit. And therefore we would end up with a rounded net demand of 4,341 units that would need to be addressed in a purchase requisition to the supplier. Now, um, let's really run um, a DRP and I will directly start it from here by um, clicking on this DRP service icon and I can execute it and then we can actually review the results um, in a so-called um, schedule maintenance planning board uh, to which I can also navigate from here by just clicking on this icon And now we should see all the purchase requisition that ERP has actually created. And um, yeah, just for information, ESPP can for sure also handle scheduling agreements. Here we are planning uh, with the contract and therefore purchase requisitions um, have been created. So, and um, if we would work with a scheduling agreement, DRP is then just creating delivery schedule lines. So, as a next step, I want to demonstrate how you could integrate elements which are not yet visible as such for planning. And um, yeah, this could be any kind of demand or receipt element. And I will work with the demand element. For that reason, I'm opening the so-called fixed demands and fixed receipts UI and I will schedule a demand um, to be valid in the next two weeks for our demo product um, on location SPP2. And to facilitate a little bit the maintenance, I um, will just copy an already deleted demand element that I have used before, which is valid 
<clears throat> starting from the 7th of March until the end of March for our test product on location SPP2. And uh, it's about 10,000 units. I'm just saving that. Now, when I'm going back to the DRP matrix, and when I'm loading again the test product, I should actually see when loading the data for SPP2 an additional demand of 10,000 units beside um, the forecast demand on the 7th of March. And when we are opening the total cross demand, we can see that as a fixed demand, valid at that point in time. So right now, <clears throat> this has been uh, the net demand, the unrounded net demand and the rounded net demand that um, had been calculated before. Um, and as you can see for sure, these 10,000 units was not yet foreseen, but they are there right now and they need to be covered. So when I click on simulating ERP matrix newly, we see that we have additional net requirements, especially on the 7th of March, that actually are going to be shifted to the next level of the BOD, which is here, the entry location. And also on the entry location, we should see that as a changed distributed plant demand for location SPP2, at that point in time, when it needs to be shipped out from the entry location in order to be right in time um, to arrive at the child locations, so this is especially on the 7th of March, in order to cover for these additional 10,000 units. Now, when I'm going to recalculate, we also see that the purchase requisition will change. And uh, when we are looking at that data over there, which is actually representing the purchase requisitions that are scheduled, we see that there is a difference compared to what we have before. Sorry. To what we have before. We see that we have started with this amount um, of, of units and now arriving, um, shipped at the 21st of February um, at the supplier side, arriving at the 27th of February, and now this amount has changed basically to around 16,000 units to arrive on the 27th in order to cover for this additional demand on the child locations on the 7th. So thanks for your attention. Um, when you are interested in subsequent planning processes like deployment, just watch out the video clip around this topic.